Welcome back to another installment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the yellowhead, small, forest-dwelling songbirds with conspicuous yellow heads that have been heavily impacted by introduced predators. I hope you enjoy. At around 15 centimetres in length and weighing from between 26 and 30 grams, yellowheads are sparrow-sized birds that are most apparent for the yellow heads and contrasting brown bodies. Also known by their Maori name of Mohua, they are mainly insectivorous, eating mainly insects and spiders, being quite vigorous in their feeding. Birds have been noted to toss leaves and bark from the canopy to the forest floor as they energetically pick off bark and moss from the trees they are hunting their prey in. Not being the best of hoverers like grey warblers and fantail, they spend their time scrambling up and down tree branches and trunks with their strong legs, which are proportionally very large, which alongside the powerful toes, are very useful for hanging upside down. To better balance, they will prop their tail feathers against branches so often that they are often worn down so much to the point that they are abrasers and end up looking like spines. Birds will usually feed either alone in small pairs or in small family groups over the summer breeding season, although come autumn and winter, they begin to become more social, and small family groups will often come together to form roaming flocks that move throughout the canopy. In times gone by, which I'll get to soon, birds could be seen foraging in groups of up to 100 or more, although nowadays 20 to 30 is more expected given their extensive decline. Still exciting, but a clear sign of how much has changed for them. Other bird species like fantail, bellbirds and parakeets will also get involved with the insects the yellowheads dislodge being caught on the wing, especially by their relatives, the brown creepers. Groups of saddleback on offshore islands have also been known to take part, with seismic flocks likely being a staple of both pre-European and pre-human New Zealand. Birds were known among early settlers as bush canaries, with the most common calls being a trill of rapid rattle-like sounds, not unlike the notes of these unrelated European birds. When it comes to their classification, they have been found to group closest with the related whiteheads and brown creepers, forming their own distinct family, being Mohuidae, with yellowheads only being found in the South Islands, alongside the brown creepers, and whiteheads being found in the north. They breed in spring and summer, mostly as monogamous pairs, or they were sometimes assisted by others, with birds weaving a feather-lined cup of material, mainly in tree cavities, either at ground level or up to 31 metres off the ground. Pairs will remain together for many years, with their bonds being maintained and reinforced through courtship feeding, with the females taking sole responsibility for incubation, although the males will spend a considerable amount of time feeding them and later their chicks once they hatch. Their clutches can have up to 1-4 to four eggs, with them taking about 20-21 to 21 days to be incubated, and being fed intensively for a few weeks afterwards, and occasionally for up to 9 months. Unfortunately, the tree nesting habits, while very secure for their chicks and the parents, and indeed very useful before human arrival for protecting against the elements and several avian predators, like moorpork and harriers, are now a death trap for them today. Mammals like rats, and especially stoats, are agile climbers, and the once perfect tree hole nest size makes it very easy for birds to be cornered in their nests and killed, since there are no escape routes from these locations, and since only female birds incubate, since nest predation results in a more biased sex ratio, with there often being more skewed male populations in areas where they're doing more poorly. Their nesting times are also a disadvantage for them in this case, since they have long incubation and nesting periods, totalling up to over 40 days as mentioned earlier, which is about two weeks longer than most other introduced passerines, which are more used to these levels of predation. Birds also nest later in the spring than most other forest birds, with many still nesting when stone numbers reach their peak around the same time. Beech moss, which occur during warmer times in the year, that's while producing a ton more food for birds, also does the same for their predators, which also explodes in number, and this has meant that many populations have become increasingly fragmented to extinction in many areas, including the Marlborough Sounds in 2000. As such, birds' numbers have declined considerably, and now exist in only around 5% of their former range, with extensive deforestation also meaning that populations are often left split from one another. Their numbers used to be in the millions, and were among some of the most abundant forest birds, being widespread across varying forest types across the South Island. Their decline was at first more slow, with them disappearing from varying lowland localities on the west coast, Nelson and Stewart Islands from 1900 to 1930, and from the 50s vanishing from North Westland. Described by some as being second only to bellbirds in abundance, something very strange to imagine today with how degraded much of New Zealand's mainland forests are, 
It was at the time still believed that despite these contractions of the range, that there was little reason to think that they would suffer more, as they had seemingly weathered the worst of the pest impacts and were still doing well in areas like the Nelson Lakes, until they weren't. They disappeared there by the 1960s, and this trend was then repeated elsewhere in the rest of the range that slowed some more biologists to realise what was going on, and that they were in a precarious position. Today, they only remain common in beech forests in parts of the Catlins, the Darts and Landsborough Valleys, as well as in scattered populations in eastern Fiordland and west Otago, and only a small remnant population in North Canterbury. A good quarter of the population live in the beech forests of the Catlins on the far south end of the east coast, and represents the most amount of birds here. They now do best in beech forests, where they largely still have plentiful habitats and food, since rats and stoats are less common at the typically higher altitudes where these forests are found, with them now being absent from low-lying hardwood podocarp forests due to them being higher in predator densities. Along with introduced mammals, birds are also targeted as nest parasites by the long-tailed cuckoo, which alongside their other mahua relatives, are exclusively targeted by them as hosts, although their losses from them are less of a concern given how they will migrate away from New Zealand in spring, and don't predate on the adults. To combat their decline, conservation efforts for them are largely the same as it is for other species, with some birds being moved to more remote, predator-free islands, alongside trapping and poisoning from 1080 on the mainland. Said efforts have managed to stabilise and even raise population numbers by fourfold in some areas like the Landsborough Valley, with fledging being 80% successful in areas with predator control, whereas they would otherwise be at 50% or lower otherwise. Poisoning and trapping does indeed lead to a boost in numbers, although eventually, when the mass season comes around again, usually every two to three years, predator numbers rise once again, and the costly cycle continues to repeat. Because of this, they are classed as endangered, and although they have a small range and low numbers, likely just over 5,000, if the population continues to either remain stable or increase, they may well qualify for a downlisting in the future, although it's for now too early to tell. Thankfully, for a species like them, yellowheads still have a relatively high reproductive rates and outputs, unlike a lot of other New Zealand birds, and so if predator control or elimination can be maintained, birds can most definitely make a quick recovery. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Fiordland Crested Penguin, birds that breeze in very inaccessible areas that have unfortunately declined quite dramatically. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.